Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'd like to ask you to pray before I even start this talk. There's a, my friends at home are kind of kept in the house because there's so much smoke from forest fires coming down from Alberta. And so I'd like you to ask you to please hold that area in your mind and in your heart and know that um, the rains come or whatever is necessary to um, alleviate, alleviate those forest fires. And, and I appreciate that. And that being said, I have a story for you about the rainbow. And this, I'm not going to read you this whole story. I'm going to condense it but because um, it's pretty long. But the ancient people recognized the rainbow as a sign of peace and harmony. The ancient Hebrews recognized it as a sign given by the creator that he wants all living things to live and to flourish in peace and harmony. All clans, all tribes, all color, colors, all faiths, and all nations. That between us there should be no division but a mutual respect and appreciation for one another's gifts as well as of our differences. In this way, we, re we enrich another by reflecting to another the beauty and magnificence of the Creator. When the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember the everlasting promise between me and all living beings on earth. So I'm going to condense this little story about the rainbow because a long time ago, all of the colors in the world started to quarrel. I know that's hard to believe, but each one believed that they were the best and the most important and the most useful and the most favored and they each gave their reason why blowing their own horns, blowing their trumpets and their, qua their quarreling got louder and louder and louder until there was a startling flash of brilliant white light and the thunder rolled and boomed out and the rain poured down relentlessly and all the colors all crouched down in fear, drawing close to one another. And then the rain spoke, you foolish colors, fighting among yourselves. The creator made you all, each with a special, unique purpose. The creator loves you all. Join hands and come with me and he will stretch you across the sky in a great bow of color to remind you that he loves you all and that you can live together in peace, a sign of hope for tomorrow. He wants us to live in peace and not try to dominate anyone. Okay, so let's talk about a rainbow. What is a rainbow anyway? Well, the full suite of colors include those that appear colorless. A true rainbow has neutral colors like clear and beige and white and black and gray and even those colors are part of the composition of that rainbow. They are just different. They are not vibrantly showing up. It's kind of like all of the people that you know, isn't it? Some of the people show up vibrantly and some of us are a little less obvious. <laughs> ah, I've met some very, very colorful people in my life. So I'm sure you all have. Rainbows have been symbols of hope to cultures across the globe for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. In ancient Greek mythology, Iris is the goddess of the rainbow, and she connected the people to the gods. In the Bible, the rainbow was a sign from God to Noah that the great flood was over. Irish legend has it that the leprechauns buried pots of gold at the end of the rainbow, I've, I've I haven't found one yet, but I've been looking. <laughs> in Chinese culture, the rainbow is a crack in the sky made by the mother goddess Nyawa, also known as Nugwa. She's a goddess best known for creating mankind and for repairing the pillar of heaven. Interestingly, the rainbow flag has only been used for a few decades as a pride symbol, and we commonly recognize seven colors as the rainbow, although scientists have identified over a million hues within a single rainbow beam. Think about that, a million hues. These seven colors, though, have come to represent the feelings and emotions, and I want to share a quote for each color as a reminder 
when we see a rainbow, to stop and go within. Red represents passion and vitality. And Ernest Holmes, in a reader on practical wisdom, said, in order to fully be alive, to enjoy life and experience health and vitality, we must begin within ourselves. To the degree that we can visualize ourselves as healthy, to the extent we know that God as life is perfect, whole, and complete, to the extent that we can accept, the ment accept mentally the perfection of the one life as our life. There is only one life, and that life is God. Then to that extent, will we be able to enjoy the health that is our birthright? And orange represents endurance and perseverance. Maya Angelou said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeat so that you know who you are what you can rise from, and how you shall come out of it. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. <laughs> but whatever you do, whatever you do, keep moving forward. And yellow represents happiness and cheer. There will never be, this is from A New Design for Living, Ernest Holmes, there will never be more of God, abundance, health, or happiness than is available to us today. Today. And the only time we can experience that is today. We can't do yesterday. Tomorrow isn't here. We have to encompass in our thought all the good that we can ever hope to experience for out of that thought comes the joy of our life today and the pattern for our experiences tomorrow. But the present moment can never provide us with more joy than that which we can embody. And green represents growth and renewal. And how do you grow? How do we grow? We grow through our spiritual practices, don't we? In the practical application of science of mind, Ernest Holmes says there is an ir irresistible, universal, and divine urge within us to be happy, to be whole, and to express the fullness of life. The latent divinity within us stirs our imagination, and because of its insistent demands, it impels and compels our growth. It is back of every invention, it proclaims itself through every creative endeavor. It has produced sages, saints, and saviors, and will, when permitted, create a new world in which war, poverty, sickness, and famine will have disappeared. And that's a major statement. When permitted, it will create a world in which war, poverty, sickness, and famine will have disappeared. I'm ready for that. And blue represents calmness and serenity. And Ernest Holmes and Creative Mind said, what more can we ask? What greater realization of life is there for us to know that God is with us? It is from this great realization comes peace, a peace which the world little understands, and a calm, a calm which is as deep as the infinite sea of love in which he realizes himself to be immersed. And indigo represents our awareness and our intuition. In this thing called you, Ernest Holmes says, first of all, you must arrive at peace of mind. I don't know about you, but that's been quite a journey for me, arriving at peace of mind. It is, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of noise out there that can interfere with that peace of mind. It is only on the basis of peace that you can persist with absolute certainty. Peace alone gives poise. There is an intuition within you which already knows that you, you, you and I are one with good. We're one, that our destiny is certain and that we must listen to this intuition for it is the voice of God within you. And lastly, we have violet, which represents imagination and creativity. And Ernest Holmes from Ideas for Living in 1972 told us, when life created us, it gave us the two great endowments of God, the two highest gifts of heaven, love and creativity. Love so that we may have confidence in life, a sense of security, 
and peace and joy in living in creativity so that we can really live as persons and express ourselves individually. Life is done very well by us. Would it be too much to say that God has given us the best it has and then let us alone to discover ourselves? God puts it out there. It's up for us, up to us. It's up to us to put it to use. And think about this. All of those colors of the rainbow exist without dissension. So let us affirm that mankind too, mankind too can exist without dis dissension. Rainbows are beautiful, colorful things that make us smile when we see them painted across the sky after a rainstorm. We've been told it is symbolic of God's promise to us, and they are a reminder for us. When you see a rainbow, they are a reminder. In science, the rainbow consists of all the colors that make up visible light. Light signifies truth and goodness, and rainbows appear for a reason. They're a blessing. They're a reminder and there are an assurance that when the storm is over, there is beauty. It signifies our promise to the earth and to one another. Yesterday, I did a little memorial service, and you know, I choked up doing the Rainbow Bridge. I, I, you know, I've never made it through it without breaking up a little bit, so I just wanted to share that. It, it's a promise, it's a promise. Sir Isaac Newton believed that there are seven colors in the rainbow and that they are represented by seven notes on the musical scale. Each planet and the level of the heavens was thought to have a musical note, a musical mode, and a color associated with it. Somewhere at home I have the keyboard from the Rosicrucians that has the color that coincides with every key on the piano. And I had a friend who was a lighting engineer at Boeing, and he created a light board, and he connected it to his keyboard, and he would do concerts for us so that we could see the music as well as hear it. It was amazing. It, it touched you on all levels. It was just an amazing experience. And so as a human race, we have evolved into understanding that even though we have clouds, and floods, and storms in our lives, or at least most of us do, nothing can destroy us. Nothing. Because we are part of eternal life, and the truth of who we are cannot be hurt or harmed in any way. Catastrophes can only alter this particular human experience that we're in. That's all. And we are greater. You and I are greater than anything that can happen to us. Amazing. And we're a choice. We are always a choice. You get to use your will and your judgment on how you're going to deal with those clouds and that storm and those rain, the rain that comes down in your life. You get to pick. You get to create your own rainbows. We get to use our own will. We get to use our own judgment. And we get to deal with our opportunities, our problems, whatever you want to call them. We get to deal, deal with them on an individual basis. There are opportunities for growth. And it's not the problem, but what we do about the problem that causes that spiritual growth. What do you do about If you bury your head in the sand like the ostrich, you're probably not going to get a lot of growth. But if you don't and you face these issues, We'll have our blessings and we'll have our rainbows. You'll have your own personal rainbow, if you will. The rainbow is a symbol, and it reminds us that the law, if we use it, works for us. There is a power in the universe greater than we are, and we can use it, and we can use it and that rainbow is a thing that represents God presence or spirit presence or whatever you want to call it that reminds us about that power that's there for us to use because 
some of us have short-term memories and we forget and we need those reminders in order to step up to the plate, if you will. Spirit has all the answers. We just have to pose the right question. It has all the answers to all the possibilities, to all the possible issues that could come up in our lives. But we need to pose the right question. There's a power in the universe, and we can use it. And many of us mistakenly think there's only one right answer. Don't we? You know, we, we come up with, okay, this is the right answer, and, and, it, and it doesn't work out. Well, you know, that's okay. Because there can be, like the spectrum of colors, a whole spectrum of right answers. So if this path doesn't work, perhaps we need to try something a little different. It is a matter of doing the right thing with the answer that you pick. It's, it's a matter of doing the right thing with the right thing. It's a matter of divine goodness. There's a power in the universe, and you can use it if you listen for your divine guidance. We all have it. We don't necessarily all use it. Life is consciousness. Truly, life is not just this physical form. Life is consciousness. Life is eternal. And whatever we choose in life manifests for us. Sometimes I don't like the choices I've made, and so I get to choose again. I used to tell my son, if you don't like what you've created, creator, time to create something different. He never liked that because, you know, it was putting the, putting the onus back on him. So whatever color of the rainbow we pick, that's what shows up for us. The rainbow was always there for all of us, always. Sometimes it's visible on the outside. Sometimes it's only visible to our mind's eye. But what we know is that God is always present, omnipresent. And sometimes it could be concealed by the clouds in your mind. Think about this. On a cloudy, overcast day, I'm flying out on Thursday, and on a cloudy, overcast day, it looks pretty miserable here. But when that airplane takes off and it bursts through the clouds, the sun is shining. The sun is always shining. It's up to us to acknowledge it and to recognize it and to remember. We just need to burst through the clouds, each one of us. We just need to burst through the clouds, and the sun is there. And when we go within, when we connect with the divine, with God, with spirit, wonk and tonk and whatever you call it, when you connect with that, you can move beyond the clouds because the correct answer is always there to whatever issue we're having. The correct answer is always there, but it's up to us to listen. And I can't speak for the rest of you, but I can speak for me. Sometimes I don't like that answer I hear and I decide maybe I'll do something different and it comes back and bites me, you know? We, <laughs> yeah. It's up to us to listen for the solution. God has an answer for every issue that we encounter. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. It is up to you, it is up to me, to tap into that eternal presence. It's waiting. It's just waiting. Where is God present in your problem? What possibilities are available to you? Where is God present here? All of us living on this planet, well, maybe other planets too, I don't know about other planets, but all of us living on this planet are part of life here on Earth. And all of us get to have issues some are major, some are minor. Some of the minor ones that we think are minor are really major to other people. And so it's not up to us to judge, to judge someone else's issues, you know. What is important 
is to pray. Go within and pray. And to believe in divine guidance. And to allow it, to allow it to unfold for you. Don't put up the wall. Allow it in. Follow your intuition and allow yourself to make other choices. When it comes back and bites you, you can make another choice. And sometimes that shortcut, oh, I'm the only one I'm sure that looks like it might be too much work, so I'm going to just take this little shortcut. And sometimes the shortcut doesn't work out for me, and so I have to go back to go. And like on the Monopoly board, go back to go. Do not collect $200. And then, <laughs> and then I get to start again and, and take a different path. But there are always avenues open to me, always. I might need to regroup. I might need to rethink. I might need to go within. I might need to pray a lot. I might need to use my other spiritual practices. All of us know that wholeness embraces all aspects of the truth. Dark and light, anger and peace, joy and pain, and all the colors and all the qualities that are represented by that rainbow. That's your reminder. Sometimes we forget. And it's nice to have a reminder. And know that it is inclusive and it's all-encompassing. We can tackle any challenging situation with openness and a willingness to learn. The power is in your hands. Use it wisely. So as we move through this ensuing week, let us look for those rainbows in our lives and allow that wisdom of the divine to move in us and through us and most importantly, as us. So please join me in prayer. Allowing our eyes to close and taking a deep breath and allowing our body to relax. Let's just move within and know there is only one life and that life is God. And that life is perfect. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. That life is in each and every one of us. Whole, perfect, and complete. That life is love and joy and peace. Kindness and compassion. Wisdom, wisdom. Hmm. What I know is there is absolutely nothing outside of God, and we are one with it. So all of those attributes of the divine are ours as well. Light and love and peace and joy, health and wholeness and abundance, wisdom, knowledge. So I know that as we move through this ensuing week, we look for the rainbows. We embrace the good. We move forward with the wisdom of the one. Light, love, peace, and joy are ours this day and every day, and I am so grateful. I'm grateful for that powerful presence of spirit within each one of us. I am grateful for the strength and the wisdom that guides us. I am grateful for the power and the love that protects us. I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always, always, and only says yes. Please join me in affirming, and so it is. <laughs> 